Hello again. We are now going to uh, finish up our calculations. Um, we basically have three total series resistances we figured out. Um, and those are the ones that are underlined and now emboldened. Those are our three total series resistances. Now to figure out the voltage drop of each of these, what we're going to do is we are going to take the resistance value by hitting the equals key to start a formula, clicking the resistance value, dividing it by the total resistance, and multiplying it by the total voltage. That, should, that will give us the voltage drop across it because the voltage drop is proportional to the amount of resistance. Now we're going to do the same thing for this series resistance. Right here, we're going to hit equals to tell X cell we're starting a formula in the blank cell for the branch resistance. We're going to click that resistance value, divide it by the total resistance, and multiply it by the total voltage, which gives us the voltage drop across that branch. Now we're gonna do that for one more value. We're going to do that for the value of 270, of 270 ohms, and that will give us the final voltage drop. So we're gonna take the resistance value of R1, divide it by the total resistance, and multiply it by the total voltage, which will give us the voltage drop. Now, I just want to demonstrate to you that this is a total of 24 volts, and I'm going to do that by hitting the equal sign and adding these together into a blank cell to show you that indeed this is 24 volts. Now that we have those voltage drop values figured out, we can go back and figure out what the individual currents are because we know that a series circuit is a current divider. So now we can go ahead and calculate for these two blank cells that we have our current values for each of these. And we know that voltage divided by resistance gives us current because the amount of electrons going through one point at one time is proportional both to the amount of pressure for the electrons to move through that point and the amount of resistance that that, that conductor is giving it to stop that flow of electrons that's being created by that pressure. So basically V divided by R equals I is what I just said. So we're going to hit the equals key to tell XL we're making a formula Click our voltage value and divide it by our resistance value, which will give us our current value. Oh, and what did we say? We said that current is constant in a series circuit. So we see that we come up with the same two currents. Let's do that again for R1. And we're not surprised to find that once again, Current is constant in a series circuit. Now we want to go back and solve for our values in this circuit for current. Because a parallel circuit is a current divider, correct? Well, because of the fact that we know our voltage drop for the branch and voltage is constant in a, ser in a parallel circuit, we can tell XL, we can tell XL that our voltage in here is going to equal the branch voltage by hitting the equals key 
and then clicking our branch voltage equals key branch voltage equals key branch voltage and then we can figure out our current value by by dividing our voltage by our resistance and that gives us the current for these two resistors the 560 ohm and the 680 ohm and now in order since current is constant in a series circuit we can now figure out the individual voltage drops by putting that current in by hitting equals and then hitting our series current hitting equals in our series current and then we know that current times resistance equals voltage so the amount of current that's going through a point multiplied by the resistance should tell us the amount of pressure that's causing that flow so in order to visualize that next so we'll hit the equals key to tell Excel we're inserting the formula click on our current value and multiply it by our resistance value and that gives us the individual voltage drop we'll do the same thing with R2 and that gives us the other individual voltage drop and to demonstrate that these equal the voltage drop across that branch I'm going to uh, insert the sum of these two values into a blank cell and we see that they match up perfectly so why don't we do the same thing for our other resistors here we're going to go ahead and figure out our current for R5 by dividing our voltage by our resistance uh, for the series resistance of R6 and R7 by dividing our voltage by our resistance and now that we have our current value we'll plug that into our blank cells because voltage is constant in a series circuit and we can figure the individual voltage drops by multiplying our current by our resistance whoop back the truck up uh, undo by multiplying our current by our resistance voila and then just to demonstrate that this is an accurate value we see that oh whoops dun, plus dun. Whoop. stop it this plus that should equal that and it does so now you can see that we've solved for every unknown value in this circuit and indeed it matches what we have in multi-sim now how do we figure out power well there's several formulas to figure out power there's power equals power equals amperage times voltage or there's power equals amperage squared times R which is personally the formula that I like best because it shows the uh, it shows the non-linear relationship between current and power transmission and it shows that it's non-linear to the amount of resistance and later on you'll learn that power transmission is at maximum when the source impedance or resistance matches the load impedance or resistance so that's why I happen to like the P equals I squared R formula because it shows that nonlinear relationship but for the sake of simplicity uh, we'll do it uh, using the P equals IE formula which is very easy to remember because uh, you can power through a pi <laughs> so power equals our current times our voltage and we have 266 milliwatts and then we can go ahead and do that for all of our cells power equals current times voltage power 
equals current times voltage. And now what I'm going to do is since we have the same relationship for all of these cells, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the, see how this turns from this uh, big plus sign to the smaller plus sign when I go to this box in the corner of the cell? I'm going to click on that when it changes and drag it all the way down and it goes it goes ahead and translates that formula to each subsequent cell incrementing it down one cell for each of those cells in the original formula so you see our total power here and remember, power is, added, power is additive um, in any type of circuit. So I should be able to take all of these values and add them into another cell, and it should equal that. Well, let's see if that relationship holds true. Wait, I need to add R4. Uh, uh, uh. No, it's R1 added to that added to that should equal this. Yes, that's right. These, these ones, these, this value, this value, and this value are the sum of the other values. So we see that it holds true. Thanks for watching.